Zapotecas has made a name for himself, making critically acclaimed horror films with The Witch in 2015 and The Lighthouse in 2019. Whilst he started his filmmaking career making shorts, I'll only be talking about his feature films. Today I'm going to be talking about how Robert Eggers shoots a scene in both The Witch and The Lighthouse, as well as talking about his pre-production process and what equipment he and his cinematographer Jaron Blaschke used to create the look for each film. Eggers began his career as a production designer of short films and being a director of theatre productions in New York City. When writing his first feature film, The Witch, he was inspired by his childhood in New England and frequently visited the Plymouth Plantation for inspiration. Both of his films have been period pieces, with his newest film, The Northman, also being of that genre. With The Witch, they had planned to shoot the film on location in New England, but due to the lack of tax incentives, they had to shoot in Canada, in an extremely remote location. He cast the film in England as he wanted authentic English accents, and ones that are represented on family newly arrived to Plymouth. His production team worked with both British and American museums in order to make the film as historically accurate as possible. He even brought in a Thatcher and Carpenter from Virginia and Massachusetts, who had experience in building from that period. When it came to The Lighthouse, it was a film that his brother Max Eggers had attempted to write after the unfinished short story from Edgar Allan Poe, titled The Lighthouse. However, the final story, co-written by the brothers, shows no resemblance to Poe's work apart from the title. When writing, they used the literature of Sarah Orne Jewett, a Maine-based writer from the late 19th century to the early 20th century. They also used surrealist elements from the works of Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Herman Menville, and Robert Louis Stevenson when writing. It is also said that a 19th century incident at Small's Lighthouse off the coast of Wales involving two lighthouse keepers, also both named Thomas, is an additional inspiration for the story. Defoe was announced to be cast in the film after expressing his admiration for the witch to the director and offering to work with him in the future, and later that same month, Pattinson joined the cast. Eggers has a very different take when it comes to storyboarding. First, he storyboards the entire film, and then Jerome Blaschke storyboards it. After they put them together, they find out what they like most and pair that as the main storyboard. From the beginning of pre-production, Eggers wanted the film to be shot in black and white, as well as a narrow and vintage aspect ratio. They chose the nearly square 1.19 to 1 ratio, whilst also opting to shoot the film on 35mm. Like The Witch, they built sets on location, however, not on an actual island. Starting with The Witch, there is a very noticeable ambience as soon as we see the first shot. They put us directly into a gloomy yet natural location. They try to shoot under overcast weather so that they didn't need to worry about the pressing highlights in post-production. As Eggers has a background as a production designer, he had a very specific goal when it came to the location. Firstly, it had to be one location, and he knew this when writing. He also wanted to find a location that had an actual forest behind the set of houses, both for visual and practical purposes. They opted to use the 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio as they wanted a classic yet timeless frame size. The extra height in the shots allow them to frame the characters in a specific way, making it seem as though the trees are looming over them. For the scenes in the forest, they use the camera to act as if it's either pulling you out or pushing you through the woods in hopes to make the audience feel as though you are moving against your will. This shot shows the family around the table, only being lit by candlelight. Blaschke creates depth in the frame by having the mother in a subtle silhouette in the foreground and the rest of the characters spaced equally around the table. He used a single candle in the middle of the table, whilst also placing several tea lights around the room for added light. This is because Eggers wanted the film to be as authentic as possible and stick to the period by only lighting by fire. However, they only managed to do this for one scene. They have a very stereotypical period accurate colour palette with dull colours as to not have anything stand out in the frame allowing for the composition to do the work. With a lot of the film being shot in medium close-ups, we rarely see the characters in a full shot. In both films, Eggers tries to cut as little as possible, as he wants each shot to mean something. Vlaschke said, the more shots you have, the less a shot means, and with each cut in the film, it loses a little power. When it comes to the lighthouse, we have a very different story, look, and feel regarding the film. And even though they are both period pieces, a lot of how they worked on set changed, especially since they were able to shoot an actual film for the lighthouse, as opposed to using the Alexa Plus. 
They analysed many films from the 30s, with Fritz Lang's M standing out to Polanski as having the strongest use of a camera in film. They chose to shoot the film in black and white instead of shooting in colour and desaturating later as it just doesn't look the same. Blaschke also wanted to eliminate the reds, which gave both Defoe and Patterson a very beaten up look, as well as making their skin look more damaged than it actually was. It also allows them to stay true to the period, which is something that Eggers finds extremely important in his films. This is why they use black and white film stock as well as older lenses. There are too many incredible frames to count in the lighthouse, but the scene in which the Thomases get drunk on turpentine always springs to mind. In this simple shot, Blaschke has managed to create a feeling of fear and excitement. We have a god's eye view of the characters, with a harsh light looking down on them, as well as a subtle frame within a frame of the circular staircase partly around them. My personal favourite scene is when they are drunk in the bedroom, taking place just before Willem's drunken monologue. Partially lit by a bright practical lamp, this intense scene is probably the most memorable in the film for most of the audience. The composition used places Willem above Robert in both the scene in which they are talking as well as his intense monologue where we are in a low angle looking up at him, but they do place us at eye level here before it gets intense. Keeping Willem above Robert in a physical way also shows us who's in charge and has the most power in the scene. Throughout both of these films, Eggers follows several of the same characteristics such as keeping characters in a medium shot, allowing for more intensity in the scene, using more abstract aspect ratios as well as staying true to the period in which he is shooting in, whether it's the locations or the clothing. Unfortunately for Eggers, they were unable to shoot the witch on film as it would have been too difficult due to the animals and location. Instead, they used the Arri Alexa Plus 4x3, paired with the Panavision Super Speed Mark IIs, Cook Speed Pancros, as well as Bosch and Lom Super Voltar lenses. The super speeds were built in the mid-1970s with higher performance and faster apertures than their standard counterparts built in the previous decade. Pancros are known for their generous flaring and forgiving sharpness whilst also giving a soft and vintage feel to a digital camera. They also have notable warping around the edges, giving them the effect of an older stills camera. The Bosch and Lom lenses that were built in the 50s and rehoused for modern day use create a very classic and retro look whilst also giving a warmer feel with low contrast to the image as well as having unique flaring. Eggers was adamant to shoot the lighthouse on 35mm and when talking to Blaschke they opted for the rarely used Kodak Double X which creates a signature look that you can't get any other way. Blaschke then had some custom filters created that emulates a film stock that went out of production in the 20s as he wanted to pull the audience into the past. Again, he used lenses from Barsh and Lum, but this time the original Boltars that were built in the 1930s. These are known for their fast at the time optics and sharp glass. They also used petable lenses, which is the oldest notable type of lens for photography, first being built in 1841. These lenses are known for their sharp definition in the centre, but tended to vignette around the edges, as well as having a very swirly look. They did have these lenses newly made, but built following the original design formula of the late 19th century. They only use these lenses for heightened moments in the film, such as the scene in which Pattinson is having sex with the mermaid. When it comes to grip equipment, on the witch they had a crane that they used to put the camera up high and dolly through the forest, making sure not to hit the camera on any of the branches. They also used dollies and cranes in the lighthouse, most noticeably for the scene in which Pattinson is painting the exterior of the lighthouse and being hung from the top by Defoe. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of how Robert Eggers shoots a scene. Once his newest film, The Northman, comes out, I'll also be looking at the cinematography behind that. In the meantime, if you have a recommendation for a film or director that you would like to see me break down, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.